Good morning. My name is Patrick John Mills and we're in my studio. Uh, I finished this painting yesterday. I had a hard time titling it. I'm not really sure what to title it. I was thinking of cocoon or transformation, something uh, along those lines, kind of like breaking free, somewhere like that. I wanted all the colors of the rainbow or primary colors underneath to kind of wash away through all the way from the top all the way through like a waterfall through the center core of the painting and then I wanted these little bars of structure like a ladder of ascending descending so that there's a sense of in and out within the painting um, the scraping I was thinking of uh, putting uh, down here you'll see the red alizarin crimson next to the cobalt turquoise next to the yellow I was thinking of uh, Sutin and I wanted to put the this green next to the red to make it pulsate a bit more uh, Really it was uh, a way of washing through the painting I put little details and tiny little notes kind of and structures and highlights like eyelashes on the painting but I tried to make it a little bit more abstract and a little bit more free the number of reds that I used was was a lot I used uh, many different reds uh, and that allows the painting to kind of not you can see it very well, the lighting's so poor. Uh, but I wanted the, the variations of red. There's Scarlet Lake, uh, Matter Lake, um, Cadium Red, Cadium Red Light, a whole bunch of different kind of pigments. There's oranges in there and yellows uh, to just give it that sense of vibration. I, I also wanted to make the painting so that the under the underpainting is kind of like ice under a a large body of water to give that kind of infinite amount of space similar to the ocean or something that uh, well I, I this painting is the largest out of the series I've done so far it's four foot by six foot I did many others before that. I did this one over here, which has a more kind of delicate, more understated. This one's a lot more dramatic. I was thinking of uh, things just kind of freeing themselves and opening out. Um, this is one that I did a while ago. I was really uh, taken by this one. Uh, the color combination. I actually the whole series of this started with this painting. I did this one just I picked up a canvas off the ground and I just did this one uh, spontaneously and it just kind of worked for me and so along came the rest of the series. I did this one over here. This one I I really went for it in a massive way. I. Uh, the amount of paint on the side you can just see. I made this one much more bold and much more stronger in the middle than the other ones. It's very pronounced. Here I, I've really chosen to use a lot of paint on the edge of the canvas. I've had some people frame my work and it's it's really annoyed me. They've they've proudly invited me over to their home for dinner. And they have this frame on it that just cages the painting, and I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm very polite, but I, but those that have the paintings framed and are watching this video will definitely know. Maybe, hopefully, I don't make them feel too uncomfortable. But I, there's been certain people that have done an exquisite job of framing, and actually, um, I know Paul did. Um, he sent a beautiful one and there's other people that have 
This one's titled Breaking Free. I wanted to, can't really see it very well behind the fire here. This one over here, I think it's so damn wet and the lighting's so poor, but you kind of see it. I love the the freckling of the under underpainting and then the release of the paint on the side. In a series, you kind of have a liberty to go in many different directions. So this one, I just wanted to title it Meditation, just to focus on one point of things kind of breaking in and breaking out, but having a pure sense of self in the middle. Um, there's one behind there. Wanted that one to be more cocooned inside. You can see the floor. Well, a pretty messy guy, what can I say? Um, everywhere's a. Um, this is actually pretty clean, to be honest. It's hard to imagine, but it is. Um, I did these over here, give you a small tour. This one I just fell in love with. This one I was, I made the pigment, uh, the color combination of, I guess, like a bit of a, a light orange. There's like orlin and yellow and cadmium yellow, a little bit of cadmium red, and uh, one other yellow. And it gave me that. And it was really the breaking in and the breaking out of the spaces. And on this one I was quite bold and put uh, a really opaque color underneath with that blue um, and then on top of that you can see through it with a transparent alizarin crimson on top here one I can't see that the glare is so hard that one was more kind of breaking free through the night kind of like a dawn of self There's some few blank canvases. I like to have things in. Can't see that one, but wow, did I ever feel like I accomplished something with that? It's so wet, I just leave it. Um, it will take months and months to dry. Here's one that I did when I vis I went over to see Jack Stecklenberg over at his studio. It's called The Visit or Visitation. Something, visiting a friend, I guess. I'm not really sure, but it's just a lot of joy in them. I did those. It's uh, a lot of fun that series. There's another one that I did. I really got consumed with this, so there wasn't really much. This one's more of a silence, more of a, a peaceful kind of minimalist kind of thing where I just wanted your mind to be at rest and to contemplate more cleanly on a on a thing and have let it be less uh, demanding in a way but more filling this one is here I can't really see that too well I just have so many paintings and I've got to clean up a bit more I haven't fixed my roof yet which I really should I did on the other half but I'm just I just, there's only so much of that, like I fixed the roof up here and I changed it all and did, but the other half I haven't, so, but anyway, the last couple of years have been pretty tough, uh, to say the very least, um, with losing the gallery, with getting, a, ending a 18 year relationship, with uh, having to convert my home into a duplex, with, sev with demolishing a section of my house. Uh, it's been, has not been easy, uh, but it's been a great challenge, and uh, I keep going, <laughs> so hell, let's keep going. Anyway, I'll let you see this one, it's, I, I wish I had a better image of those bloody lights. When you stand in front of it, you really feel it, because it's, it's as big as self. It's as big as what you would stand in front of it. So to have it at the, the right height and to be able to just feel the painting and feel the feel your lungs and feel the air going inside your body and inhaling and exhaling and feeling your spine and your legs 
and your vertebrae and your neck and everything of your body it's it's um, a lot of contemplation a lot of thought went into it and uh, I was really pleased with it I it took a lot the hardest part of doing this one of the hardest parts of doing this painting was being so compulsive obsessive about it and being so into it but yet having to be around other people and still not uh, and have their understanding I guess um, it also demanded a lot of patience which is not something I'm very good at but putting the the first layer on um, right away when I when I did this painting it was like I touched the first moment I the first marks I made were really just bang on and they they came out very graphic and they were very um, pronounced so I had to diffuse that and make and which was kind of nerve-wracking because I needed not the whole painting to be so um, strong and so pun so pungent I guess I'm not really sure of a girl the volume of every element couldn't be quite had to there had to be variations there had to be positive and negative space there had to be a sense of depth there had to be a sense of opaqueness uh, uh, an element of transparency and so when I put the first layers on everything was very dominant and so when it came time to put the to to work that it was kind of like you, you had I had something that I was so proud of and so like wow oh I almost felt like ending the painting there but it it didn't demand enough and I wanted to push it and it felt like oh that's too easy um, so here it was you'll get a real sense of it it was diffused and I had to keep working it but it was quite nerve-wracking because um, I didn't want to lose those elements so I but I, I feel really successful and not uh, and I felt really good about it in the end so anyway I'll uh, I guess the uh, the other thing is I was thinking of kind of the painting having a the marks are made from left to right to give it a sense of balance the the organic form is very tall and then the the work kind of goes from east to west to north to south and it, it just opens up in all directions so as tr and then if I was to turn it sideways it would have a nice calm horizon and and it would go it, it just uh, I really pushed things to get the red to have the, the the solid kind of foundation to the red it took uh, quite a few days and a lot of patience of letting it dry but I couldn't let it over dry so that I was putting a, a sticker on top I had to really kind of calculate the dry the dry time rate and to make everything integrated as one so it really when you do a, a re, when I do a really large painting I it, it's it's quite a, a an energy level undertaking and this one most certainly um, was was uh, like that. I I left the studio completely exhausted. I was completely. I, I came in really giving it a hundred a hundred percent with all determination and focus to really have that kind of level of concentration to make things happen at that creative level and on that scale it you really had to push yourself to be that engaged and at the end of it I was at the end of the I guess the last week of doing it um, really just I was white I felt like yeah anyways uh, but I just felt so complete I felt so satisfied with the with the end result anyways thank you so much